What's up, guys? It's Majesty95 for PX1 Sports, and we have a designer on Madden with us, Clint Oldenburg. A lot of you guys know him from Twitter. Uh, he's here to talk a little bit about some of the new things in Madden. First thing, obviously, we know you're really big on blocking, and you put a lot of work into it over the years. What's different with blocking this year? What's the biggest thing that guys are going to see? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, we did a lot of work on blocking. There's so many kind of little things that we did to improve just any pain point that you guys had. Okay. That it's it's really coalesced into a big story, but I think the headliner, as you very well know, is ID the mic. Right. I think that's a bit of a game changer for anyone that wants to control their pass protection and take away things like nickel blitz too that kind of took over the competitive scene and probably some simulation leagues too. Um, it's one of those things where you are in full control of how you want to direct your protection, has risk and reward. If you're right, you know, they're going to block it up the way you want them to. And if you're wrong, you risk having pressure come on the other side. Right. Think of it like a spotlight feature. You're directing your protection to who you think is the extra rusher. So you also mentioned something else uh, going into the blocking. And one of my big things that I was big on was the screen plays. We talked about it when we were out there a little while ago. Uh, it notice on wide receiver screens and on halfback screens, they look better. They're actually, when you get a three on one, they're not just kind of letting the one guy through. What did you guys do with that, and what are we going to notice there? Uh, we, we kind of looked, not kind of, we did look at open field blocking, screen blocking, and pullers, and just looked at ways that we could improve. Actually, a funny story with the wide receiver blocking, we found a bug, a pretty major bug that we actually shipped last year, where in some cases, receivers didn't know they were supposed to be blocking. They thought they were still running their route. Um, and we uncovered that uh, about eight weeks ago, and that's made a humongous difference in, like you said, wide receiver screens right. and even downfield. Uh, so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, we're not proud that we shipped the bug, but we're proud that we fixed it. <laughs> uh, and then, like you said, screen blockers. Uh, we just dug in. We just started running screen plays, debugging what would go wrong when things would go wrong, and identified areas that we could fix it. And hopefully that's a much improved area of the game. It's definitely, we were labbing a little bit. It definitely looks a lot better. You're able to use it a lot better. Uh, now, another thing we noticed while we were down there is there's some new plays in there, specifically running plays, that get really good blocking. Can you talk a little bit about those, what's added, and what guys are going to notice with them? Well, to start from a higher level, we, we wanted to focus on all the offensive playbooks this year to give variety to every playbook. We want each offensive playbook to have its own identity. We want people to want to try different things, and when we watch the, you know, the sim leagues online or we watch the competitive uh, eSports games, we don't want to see everyone running the same plays. Right. So we wanted to give more variety in those things and an identity each playbook. And like you're talking about, we added a lot of new running plays. One of my favorites is 26 Duo, basically the power O scheme with no pulling guard. We also have like 94 Will, uh, 90, uh, let's see, 94 Mike. Mm -hmm. Um, just different variations of ISO schemes or misdirection schemes that just give you a lot more, uh, like I said, variety for things that you want to run. Now another thing that was really big last year is guys would come out in quarters, dollar, something like that, and try to shut down like a power I form running. I know that's been addressed this year also. What did you guys do with that, and what are we going to expect when somebody tries to play that on us this year? Yeah, so we took that to another level this year. We had some stuff in last year for it, but I, I didn't think it was powerful enough. Obviously, okay. it wasn't. So we went to uh, sledgehammer mode, and now you're going to see a, a very noticeable effect if you are in dollar, quarter, or dime, and the offense is in a run formation, and they're running a hardball run action play, not draw. Right. You're going to see an effect. You're going to see a lot of guys on the ground. You're going to see a lot of open lanes, and hopefully – that's not going to encourage people to make YouTube videos about getting pancaked, but rather make them want to play more diverse defensively. And if they want to make YouTube videos about them getting pancaked running quarter, I'm cool with that. Um, another thing we know you work on a little bit is special teams. And last year, the kick meter started out was a little bit too over or too hard for a lot of guys. Then it kind of went the other way where it was a little too easy. This year, it seems like it's got a little bit more of a balance. You guys have tweaked it a little bit. What did you guys change with the kicking this year? Well, the first thing is how it looks. So functionally, it still works the same way it did, but we didn't think that how it worked was clear to everyone. So we added some uh, user interface elements to be more clear about it. You'll notice the red bar at the top of the meter. That's to show you exactly where you're gonna get that overkick penalty, which is if you don't lock in your power before the cursor hits the top of the meter, you will be penalized 25% power. We also added 100% text on the side of the meter to tell you that the line very near to the top of the meter is actually 100% kick and going over that has risk and reward of getting either a power bonus or power penalty. Okay. So that should be all very clear. In terms of how it feels, uh, to address what you said last year, 
we liked the way it was at launch, but what we found out was a lot of users were experiencing lag online. Okay. And we wanted the kicking to be harder and be a skill mechanic, but the lag made it almost unusable online. So we did tune it to be a bit easier, and by, by, by a bit, I mean 10%, okay. which is um, hardly noticeable by just looking at the meter, but when you played online, you could say, okay, at least I can make a field goal. So that was the okay. reasoning behind that. Gotcha. What you're referring to as you play the game is it's now tuned a bit differently for the game styles. Simulation has a different kick meter value than competitive and arcade. Okay. So arcade is obviously, we, we want the game to be very high scoring, so you should almost never miss a kick on arcade unless you're really trying to. Competitive and sim are pretty close. Uh, this is one outlier in the game modes. We actually have simulation kick meter tuned to be a bit more difficult than competitive. Okay. Um, which is, is not generally how the rest of the features work. Right. Okay. Last question. Frostbite is obviously the big thing this year. I know it's not necessarily your specific area, but what new changes as far as what you can tell us will we see directly from Frostbite um, that you guys were able to get in there? Well, I think the changes that you're going to see this year are visual. You're going to see, you know, best in class visuals. You're going to see updated stadiums. You're going to see some new sideline interactions with players coming off the field, okay. uh, coach interactions. Um, the game just looks uh, different, looks better. Yeah. The players look better. The grass looks better. The stadiums, you're going to see fireworks pregame, you know, all that pregame cool stuff, right. uh, visuals. But I think moving forward, I think the real big benefit of moving to Frostbite is you have all of our sports titles are now on the same platform as a battlefield okay. and so you have dev teams that are solving the same problems now so you don't have you know we're on ignite they're on they're on frostbite so on and so forth they're solving a problem over here that doesn't help us right. now we're all working together as a label to solve the same problems and you're going to see all the games improve because of it okay. Now, one last question. i got to ask this for one of our guys in our league he's been on it all year i've played it a couple times and i haven't looked at it yet when you're in the play call screen and you're in on a fourth down, is there a wind sock or anything that can tell you where the wind's going? And is that something you guys can add in? That's a great question. So I've been trying to get that in for a couple of years. And every year it comes down to, well, we don't have a UI resource for that. And UI is user interface. And even though I put, you know, go through all the proper channels and try to get in, it always falls off right when we hit alpha. It's always in plan. Yeah, we're going to do it this year. We're going to do it this year. And then it falls off due to priority. So. I'll tell you guys, I'm going to keep pushing to try to get it in. It probably will not make it in for uh, this year, okay. uh, but I'm going to keep working. All right. Things aren't always as easy as we want to make them on the sidelines, but you know they're working for it, so keep it going. All right, we appreciate it, Clint. Yeah, thanks, thanks for your time. I, I want to tell all you guys I appreciate your league. It's cool. You got the best you know, uh, presentation thank for you. your league around. Really appreciate what you guys doing. Thank you. And they're going to turn around and hand it off. Oh, they fumbled it. Brandon Davis fumbled and it's picked up. Oh, he's going to the 30, to the 20. Atlanta's going to win on a fumble recovery.